Wake that ass up. LA's number one hip hop morning show is Nick Cannon Mornings on Power 106. Oh, yeah, Nick Cannon Radio. Time for an up close and personal conversation, a quarantine check in. And you know, I have my close conversations with people that I admire, that I look up to, fixtures in the game. And this man is all the above and so much more. A true icon, a true legend for the times. The one and only Lil John. What's popping, my brother? Hey, what's good, my brother? Good to see you. You're looking nice and healthy over there. I appreciate it. You as well. I, 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 are we coming live from the A ATL one time? Yeah, ATL. I'm from my office. This is where I spend most of my day in the office, working on the computer and conference calls and all that kind of crap. Yeah. Well, first off, we gotta really check in on on the real check in. Family is everybody good? Everybody's you know still motivated. Yeah, actually, my son graduates from college from NYU tomorrow. So wow, uh, great around here. Clap that up one time for the family. I'm I'm also a uh, class of 2020. Uh, I graduated last week from Howard University. So and I'm actually thinking about doing some. You know, I'm doing my uh, graduate stuff, and I'm actually thinking about taking some classes at NYU too for you know my psychology uh, master. So uh, I would definitely be uh, uh, NYU. Uh, a student as well going <laughs> forward, man. But uh, man, it's good that the family's you know all all on the up and up. I'm, I'm here in Atlanta is is one of the first to kind of get things uh, back to normal or whatever the new normal is. But you said I'm still staying in this house. Yeah, I I ain't like falling for the okie doke. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm staying in the house is like uh, I'm gonna wait and see what happens. <laughs> you know, because I, I got people in China I've been talking to since this stuff started. Right. And they've been giving me updates of like what China been going through. And, you know, China just went through another outbreak in some small community. So it's like we ain't never even really clamped down all the way. And right. We got back. You know, they're trying to get back to normal so quick. It's going to be a, another way. Um, right. But, you know, I'm just boosting my immune system on my CMOS every day there it is. all my other different supplements and I'm just I'm 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 confident in my immune system that there I'm going to be good regardless but I'm not taking no chances there it is and you protect another you you up on that oregano oil yet Yep, I've been up on that for a while. I take that every day too. Yeah, wild oregano, oregano, oregano oil, oil, black seed oil. That that that'll keep your immune system boosted in a big way. So, uh, uh I'm glad I'm glad you're taking this serious, little John, because we you you're known as as a partier, uh, <laughs> and and when little John is staying in the house, that that means you should probably take note, ladies and gentlemen. It's for real. It's exactly. It's for real. <laughs> nah. So one thing that's for real, man. Seeing y'all battle that versus you, you got one of the hottest versus battles. You and T Pain went at it, uh, and it's so much so that hopefully when all this pandemic stuff is over, we gonna see y'all on the road together. Definitely, we are gonna definitely do that. We actually just talked like yesterday, and we were like, yeah, we definitely want to go out together and do some stuff. Cause I mean. Uh, I think we were just shocked at the response because we were just there just being ourselves. That's just our personalities. You know, we've worked together numerous times. Uh, we have songs together. So, like, and then, like, if I'm in the city, he's doing a show, I come check him out, vice versa, whatever. So it was just, like, we were just being ourselves. And, I mean, it's amazing that so many people, like, even after Saturday's battle, people – you know, we're tweeting me like I still love Lil John T Pain best, and yeah, I, I mean, I, I just can't thank people enough for just for all of that love. We just was having fun, and it yeah. was it was a battle, but it was like y'all uh, brought a show too, because y'all are two showmen with very positive and high frequency energy. So like, it was entertaining just to sit there, because some of these versus battles, even though we love the artists, we sit there. I be falling asleep. I'm gonna keep it a stack. <laughs> I can't sit there and watch four hours on my phone of people just playing songs to each other. So you got, right. there's an element of knowing how to do this and you guys did it well. So I got to ask you, John, who do you think won? Like, I know we had, we got Swiss and, and Tim put it in, but like, do you, you feel like you, you, you did your thing or uh, I'm saying, cause that was, I think I, I think I pulled it out. I mean, <laughs> cause like, I T-Pain was, T-Pain had a better sound system than you though. Like, I don't well, know. That's, that's Instagram. Yeah, oh, okay. Instagram, 
it's usually the person that comes in second doesn't that sound isn't as good. Uh, so I don't know what the hell. Uh, it's, that's some Instagram crap. I was but like, I why? I like I thought yours because you, John, your 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 songs technically bang harder than pain songs. Right. And I was like, man, I wanted I wanted to feel John's music a little bit more. I mean, I could control it, but yeah, I think I pulled it out because I had more a more diverse catalog facts and i pulled records out that people did not remember yeah. or even or know even i know. did like the cableton yeah you know the cableton remakes the lean back remakes people probably didn't expect me to play that yep. like so much of different the way I, I i i laid it out was you know i think i just was more diverse and i hit him harder and i would just he would hit me and i, I punch right back there it that's is. what also made it interesting yeah, nah, y'all was going hit for hit. My question is, you didn't play Bia Bia. Like, well, I switched up because um, he played I'm So Hood. Right. And I was going to counter that with Bia Bia. Right. I was like, oh, you want to play a hood record? Then I played Put Your Hood Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's, hey, that ain't no punk either, though. But I was just, <laughs> I was waiting to, to, to go crazy over Bia Bia. I had it. I had it in, you know, I had it in the arsenal, but. It, more like, hits in the stable. <laughs> man, it, I had about 35 songs I could have played, man. It's crazy. Now, you got more than that. Like, if you a true Lil John fan, you know you could have went all day on him. Uh, just repping the A. Now, who does Lil John want to see next in the versus battle? Uh, I want to see the Three Six Mafia versus uh, um, Bone Thugs because that Ooh. was a big rivalry. You know what I mean in the streets. Really? Yeah, I think that one. See, would I didn't be even crazy. know about that. That would be crazy though. That's yeah. That yeah, they had beef for for a while. Wow, I didn't know. because Three Six thought Bone stole their style. So they was, you know, really. So, because, because to me, I would say when it comes to like fast rapping, I mean, a salute to Twister. He was the one that I definitely first saw do it. Uh, but, but I thought that that rhythmic flow, that rapid pace, I would give that to to Bone Thugs. And right. I didn't know about Three Six Mafia until after. So you putting me up on game right there. Yeah. Not only did I know about, I didn't know about the beat, but I didn't know that there was like a originator conversation o over the flow. Right. Yeah, that was years and years and years ago. But yeah, three six definitely was not feeling bone thugs. Wow, that, uh, that, that's thugs so, against thugs right there too. I yeah, would love to so see. I, and, I think, and everybody's think grown and matured since then because you know Juicy J loved everybody. And right. My guys, Bone just was on Wild and Out having fun. So I think that'd be a good yeah. fun one. Yeah. Speaking of Wild and Out, man, when you coming back, you got one of the classic episodes ever. And we 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 play a game called Turn Up for What in Atlanta, and your ass ain't been there. I've been on the road, man. man I, I don't want to hear that people. shit. We, we talked about me coming back. Except for years. We locked it down yet. How you going to have one it. of the greatest Wild and Out episodes ever? You did a remix to London Bridge that people still yes. play in the club. Right. Man, you know I'm a wild and out guy. I used to just come and hang out with y'all when Facts. I wasn't working. Facts. <laughs> and now we in your city and you ain't been there. You're like a, a wild and out icon. I'm just saying we're going to be back there this summer when everything open up. If we don't get a damn little John Evans, you can't say you ain't in town no more. <laughs> hey, yeah, right now I'm here. Ain't no show books. Adam <laughs> there is clear. So we're so. going to see you on Wild It Out. And, man, I honestly got to say, speaking of, you have been someone who's taken this worldwide, man, and, and done so many things. And, again, we go way back, and all I can do is, is salute everything that you have done. And you are one of those artists that have been resilient, man. They they can't count you out for nothing. Just when, like, a lot of these, even in these verses battles, like, oh, man, that was back in the day. You was playing current hits that, that are yeah. still charting that you banging on them. And now, speaking of a current hit, y'all done did it again. Ursher, Luda, once again, this, come on, man, you got to tell me, we're going way up with this. I wanted to call it Lovers and Friends Part 2, but y'all took it on a whole <laughs> whole nother route with the sex beat thing. Tell me about that. How'd that come together? Uh, well, it, we were all in the studio, and um, JD was there, too, and um, we just, Usher had just really started working on this stuff. He had worked with JD for like a month or two before that. And then they were all in LA. So we got in the studio and we was kicking stuff around. 
And me and my boy DJ Chronic, we we were working on the beat, and I was like, man, this beat feels like sex. This is like a sex beat, <laughs> right? So I we just named the beat Sex Beat, and Jermaine he wrote something initially. I had forgot all about this, but he told me he wrote something else initially, and then I was like, nah, bro, that ain't it. And he went back. And he wait, wait, back. you told JD not a, one of the greatest songwriters of all time? Like, nah, that ain't it. I mean, <laughs> hey, it, was, it wasn't it. It wasn't what I wanted for the beat, what I thought the beat needed. Right, right. And so he basically just took the concept of the song being called Sex Beat and wrote a song about Sex Beat. So we laid the song, and um, Luda didn't get on it right away. Luda got on it like a year ago. So the song was just sitting for two years. Wow. We knocked it out two years. Luda, and then I guess Usher was still working on his album. He sent it to Luda, and then I came to the studio one day. I was like, they were like, yo, you heard the Luda verse? I was like, no, nah, play that shit. And I heard, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah. So jump. So now it's three years later. <laughs> the verses is coming up. The day before verses, I see T-Pain has posted a preview of a song he did with uh, Chris Brown. So I'm, I hear Usher like, bro, I'm doing this battle tomorrow, bro. You know how big this battle is. Boom, boom, boom. Your boy might play a Chris Brown record. So I need to be able to play sex beat. Right. So we went back and forth about the mix and all this stuff. And he's like, all right, cool. So I played it that night and the people responded immediately like, wow, this is incredible. Y'all been sitting on this for two years. What is wrong with y'all? Because I thought it was two years, but three years. Right. And in a week, the song was out, which is unheard of in the music business. As you know, you got three Clarence major artists. Is, yeah. Work the deal out. The song was mixed by Tuesday. Now, the verses happened Saturday. Right. So the deal was done by Wednesday, mixed and mastered by Tuesday, and wow. without Friday. So Amazing. it's unheard of. Um, and the response is incredible from everybody. Um, There's going to be a lot of quarantine babies made to this song. Facts, facts. And, and we, you know. we playing it on Power 106. We playing it on Nick Cannon Radio, the countdown and Appreciate everything. It. So, nah, we, we definitely. And the video is coming. We just shot the video. The Wait, video how, how y'all shoot done. the video? You ain't left the house, John. I shot at my house. <laughs> Luda shot at his house. Usher shot at his spot. And we shot a bunch of different girls in other spots. So, Wow. It's going to be a little hodgepodge of some creativity, and I think people are going to really enjoy it. Hopefully, it'll be out in the next 10 days. The sex beat. Obviously, you got, last time y'all got together, I mean, shoot, the two times that y'all got together, y'all made classics from Yeah and Lovers and Friends, and sex beat feels like it's on the way. Man, I, all I got to say, man, I'm truly grateful for you to take the time out, chop it up, what it's doing the quarantine. Uh, but I got to put you in the hot seat. You, we, we friends and everything, but you know what we do? Oh, we, it's, the, it's the firing squad. You can handle this, though. It's just it's yeah. e easy Come questions, on. man. It's, it's, it's <laughs> nothing crazy. A little philosophical, uh, you know, sometimes it gets psychological, but you got this. Uh, right. We started off easy. Every time we talk about love or fear, you know, it's a, it's a great debate in psychology saying that there's only two emotions and everything mm. else stems from that. Loved or feared? Which one does Lil John want to be? Loved or feared? Loved. Because <laughs> love conquers all. Positivity is everything. That's how I live my life. Positive, positive vibes, positive energy. Be around positive people. I can't be around any negative energy whatsoever. So I'd rather be loved. There it is. No low frequencies. But we're talking about fear. What's Lil John's greatest fear? I think every artist's biggest fear is failure. So mm -hmm. not having that record that is a smash when you you just know you got, I know you've been in the studio as many times as I have. And it's like, sometimes you're like, oh, I know I got one. You put yeah. it out, it doesn't work. But failure also creates success. Yeah. Because I remember I dropped my album, Crunk Juice, and didn't do what I was, it was supposed to do, but I kept working, kept working, came with, turned out for what later. So yeah. failure also creates success. So it's all good, no matter what. What What's one Lil John record that you was like, man, that was a smash. People just slept on it. What's the one that they slept on, John? Uh, uh, I don't know right now. I can't. It may be. 
probably like something off of that Crunk Juice album because I thought I had a lot of really dope records. I just say the Crunk Juice album, not Crunk Juice, uh, Crunk Rock. Crunk oh, rock, right, crunk right. Rock. I was going to say I Crunk, yeah. That's what, Crunk Juice was a good album. <laughs> crunk Rock didn't do as well as it was supposed to because of various stuff. But uh, the Crunk Rock album, I thought I had some really cool, unique songs on there. And uh, yeah, it, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. Hey, but man. after that, turned out for what turned came, out for what changed everything again. There it is. All right, man. Best piece of advice Lil John's ever received. Be patient, um, and like be a good listener. Pay mm. attention to what's going on around you. I think my mom and my dad used to always be like, "Pay attention whenever you go somewhere. Pay attention to your surroundings," and that's one important thing because we lose, we could get caught up in something here when it's all kind of other stuff going on around you that, that you don't see. So be patient and be cognizant of everything that's going on around you. Worst piece of advice Lil John's ever received? Uh, your stuff is whack. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that to Lil John? Yeah, I remember the first song I ever put out as an artist was a song called Who You With? And I remember my man Greg Street in Atlanta he was a good friend of mine. He broke a lot of records. Absolutely, for us, so, so legend. Like, so I remember I took him the record, and I I played it for him. He laughed at me. He was like, "Wow!" I, I was about to say, "Street, keep it real like that." Yeah, he thought he don't pull no trash. punches. He'll tell you if he thinks yeah. your shit is trash. He thought it was trash, and I did not think it was trash. And, and you I were right. Going, <laughs> going to another club, well, going to a club, and I gave it to the DJ because I would this is when I was hustling my own records. I hand to hand comment. You know what I mean? You know, passing it along. Like um so I gave it to this DJ and the DJ was like, man, I love this. I'm gonna play this five times a night. And this was the hottest club for Atlanta. It's the hottest Atlanta club at the time. It's called the five five nine. So five, for the hood five, stuff, nine. <laughs> yeah, the hood stuff, hood, this was the hottest hood club in Atlanta. Yep. So this guy broke the song and made it a hit, and it was like the anthem for Freaky. So, yeah, that was the worst piece of advice, that your stuff was whack. Yeah, like, from Greg Street. Shout out to Greg Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, switch it up. Lil John's favorite movie, all time. Uh, I would say Urban, Minutes to Society. Facts. And then Pop Culture, Face Off. Oh, yeah. Them was definitely, off. definitely, both of those are in my top 10. Maybe even yeah. my top five. I'm rocking with you on those all day. Yeah. All right, Lil John's guilty pleasure. Uh, I'm healthy as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it don't even have to be like something you indulge in into your body. Like, are you a gamer? No, I mean, because you... people think I'm party, 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 party. But we do think you that. You know, I make my own CMOS gel. I take my supplements every day. Oh, so you say like, your health cooking. is your guilty pleasure. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I use coconut oil instead of olive oil. Like, you know, I make my own- And your own skin's screw looking screw. good, brother. I, I see it. You, you're glowing. <laughs> I drink a lot of water. You know, I do the, I do the gallon a day. You All know? facts. Like, I'm, you, hey, health. You, you, so I guess preaching people, to the choir. You know, people have an energy of you, so that's something that people don't know, basically. But uh, let's say guilty pleasure. I don't- uh, I guess not healthy. I love fried fish. I'm an Atlanta guy. I love fried fish. Fried fish. There it is. All right. Uh, you're on an island, John. You only can take three things. What are you taking with you? Um, I watch a lot of Naked and Afraid. So <laughs> a fire starter. Okay. <laughs> a pot. Right. And a net. A net. To get your fried you fish. Catch fish. <laughs> You're gonna be fried fish on your island the whole time. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Now, uh, we always say this. Um, the one album, if you can only listen to one album for the rest of your life, what is that album? Straight out of Compton. Really? NWA. Wow. Like I was a big, I'm a big Ice Cube fan. I was Facts. growing up. He's in my top Ice five. Cube. Ice Cube and, and Too Short was like what I listened to every day in high school. Every and you probably you school. probably produced Too Short's biggest record, his most iconic record. And that's what's crazy about it is I work, I got to work with when I grew up, Ice Cube. We did, you know, the song with the most swear words ever. What is that? Roll call. 
Yeah, <laughs> Google it. Roll call. Me and Ice Cube. Um, so working with him on that was amazing because I got to literally produce him. True story. We were in the studio. He laid the verse down. I was like, ah, I don't know about that one, Cube. I want some harder shit than that, bro. I wow. Was, was Not only did you tell JD <laughs> <laughs> that the greatest songwriter ever that he need to do it again. You told Cube to go back in the booth. One of the greatest rappers ever. So Cube goes in the booth. He writes, uh, well, he does another rhyme and it's harder and insanely hard. So I'm like, you know what? I still like the other verse though. So I use that verse as now his first verse. And then I take the other verse and use it as a second verse. Wow. So that was great to produce someone that I'd grown up with. And then, yeah, too short, true story. He came and got me out of the, the terriblest, con most terriblest, I know that ain't a word, contract <laughs> in the universe, signed me to his label, Gave me a studio to work in. I had never really had access to a studio like that. Could go in and work whenever. And then after a couple of years, let me out of that contract, no strings attached. And I was always so grateful for, to him. I was like, whenever you need something from me, I got you. And eventually I did that for him and gave him Blow the Whistle, which is one of his, wow, like you said, that's, biggest records. you dropping gems right now. We did not know. We, I never knew you were signed uh, to Too Short. Yeah, in the late 90s, I was signing him about three, three, four years or something like that. So I produced a bunch of records um, over at his um, Dangerous Music Studios and stuff. Wow, and then you talk about the, you get you hold the record for the song with the most cuss words in it, which leads me yes. to my next question. What's Lil John's favorite cuss word? Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And then I got to ask you this. Lil John's top five, the the top five artists that you've been inspired by. It sounds like like Cube and, and Short might be in there somewhere. Yeah, definitely uh, Cube. Uh, I I fuck with Nas heavy. Ooh. I say let's go top five rappers. I think I've worked. With. Okay, uh, let's do that. Lil John's top five rappers that he's worked with. You know that I idolize. So yeah. Cube, mm. Too Short. Okay. Uh, who else? Um, fuck Nas, of course. Right, Ma D. Ooh, cause I'm a. It's it's crazy because I'm a Southern rapper in the time. I was about to say I don't think there's any Southern guys. rappers in your top five, and you only got one more to go. <laughs> well, no, oh, uh, uh, well, UGK. We're gonna put UGK. All right. <laughs> yeah, UGK. No, I was just gonna say, you know, I work with you know Nas and the Bravehearts and did a song with them when South rappers weren't get, were getting the respect. Right. I worked with Mob Deep and did a song with them. Bo and both of these songs were singles at a time when the Southern rappers weren't getting the respect. So, Fact. of course, I love all those guys. And then, yeah, of course, Q, of course, Too Short, of course, um, UGK. I, I got to work with them before Pimp C died, and I'm Man. a big fan of theirs. Fact. I, I could go on. And, hey, and now that's a strong top team. five right there. You you brought the heat uh, in, in a heavy way. And you know what? This is how we always end the fire squad. I got to ask you, you're already a legend. You're already an icon. But when it's all said and done, the journey of Lil John, what's one word that describes Lil John? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. There you have it. Up close and personal conversations with the icon. The man who put yeah on the map. The one and only my brother. Thanks for checking in with me, man. It's Lil John yeah. on Nick Cannon Radio.